Well, I'm Mitch Dickey. Uh, you may have uh, seen me on Twitter. Uh, I'm the de facto single channel architecture guy, I guess. Um, <laughs> doesn't seem to be too many of us out there. Uh, so a little bit of background, and I got into it. I, I've only ever done Maru since I began my wireless career. Um, I've been doing it now for about six years. Uh, but now I do it on a very, very big scale. So and you, you guys are about to see that right now. So this is our dashboard. Uh, I work for Loudoun County Public Schools in Northern Virginia. Um, as you can see, uh, we have lots of clients. Um, at this particular time, uh, it was 66,000 devices. This was concurrent devices. Um, usually happens about 10.30 every day. Um, and the really cool thing about this, other than it's all that many devices on one channel, for the most part, we'll get into that a little bit later, is that you can see by the pie chart, a lot of them are all five gigahertz. So we're very proud of that. We're very fortunate. We understand that a lot, obviously, we all strive to put our clients in that area. But that number of clients, we're able to put on five gigahertz, and it, it works great. So um, as you could tell, too, we have uh, 98 controllers that service roughly 100 buildings. Uh, and 5,700, just over 5,700 access points right now. So we, we pretty much put the Wi-Fi in every instructional area. That's the intention. In all of our schools, instructional areas these days can be anywhere from a hallway to a, obviously a gym, a cafeteria, basically anywhere you could stick a student. So, and, and at, as of this, our, our highest score so far is what I like to call it, we're, we're pushing 68,000 concurrent devices. Um, but we average about 60,000 uh, at the peak every day. So I, I started doing this about a year ago, as you can see by the dates. So this is what I'm most proud of because I hear, and, and forgive me if I'm on the defensive here because I feel like I kind of am, because um, you hear about all the SDA jokes all the time. I've heard them all, maybe most of them anyways. But we, a, a year ago, a, we were at about 47.7. So just not too long ago, on January 26th, we were at just under 68,000 devices. So that's, as you can see, 20,000 client increase in one calendar year. So the scalability crap that I got to hear all the time, there you go. The numbers speak for themselves. So I just wanted to show you this. This is, this is typical. This was a couple weeks ago. This is just the, our network manager. And it's showing basically the peaks and valleys of every day. But if, if you look closely, and it's kind of hard to see, and I apologize for that. But during the day, obviously, you could see it's about 60,000. And then it tails off towards the end, because everybody goes home and it just dives. But if you look at the very low parts of every, every day, even in the middle of the night, there's 20,000 devices on. That doesn't mean they're doing anything, but they're, they're on. They're on the network. So I ran a report, um, well, February 6th, so for, for a 24-hour period. And this was also a pretty cool stat, I thought. Um, so I ran the report, and the report was for unique stations in a 24-hour period. So, which that means is, and I'm sure you guys know, but I'll just say it. So the, a station comes on, they may leave, they come back, that's still one time. Okay, as you can see, in 24 hours, 95,000 devices connected to our network. So again, scalability, you know, it, it does work. It does work. 80% um, of the clients are on the 5 gigahertz band. I, I know a lot of you guys um, probably would die to have that. And the really cool stat right there, 52% of them are Apple devices. Um, we're not necessarily an uh, Apple school system. Actually, we're not. We do have plenty of iPads that are bought by the school system. Um, most of our teacher-issued devices are Windows, like Dells and such. Um, Androids are, only make up 8%. The 19% the others, I'm really, obviously, I don't know what that is. I thought that number was kind of high not to know, but that's what it is. I, I just didn't have an answer for that. So, yep, that's what she looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So obviously, if there's a school in a neighborhood with houses around, it looks a little bit different. But uh, I, can't, I did this one in our office. I actually think I even filtered it just so you'd get the, the idea. But yep, there it is. We have two SSIDs. And you're either on the internal or you're on the external. And the open is open, no captive portal. You're welcome, Keith. Uh, I agree with you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the best captive portal is no captive portal. That's what I say. But um, that's what it is. We have two SSIDs. That's down from about six when I started. So uh, yeah, we're very proud of that. And that's exactly what it looks like right there. So that's, that's one particular model of uh, access points. So different models will be on a different channel. I'll get in that in a second. So right here, as you can see, um, all the rates below 24 are turned off. So we design it so basically that we, I designed it for roughly 30 to 50 devices per classroom. So I trim off all the rates. I turn the radios all down, You know, just the normal stuff we would typically do. Um, you can see I, I start at a number and I tune as needed because we don't necessarily get to tell the architects where we want the access points. The architects tell us on the blueprints, so I kind of have to do it a little bit backwards. And when it's done, I put all the information into Echohow, thank you UC and those guys, and I make it work that way. So, and as you can see, obviously all my 2.4 radios are in 20. All of my AN radios are 40, that is correct. And all of my AC radios are 80 meg wide. Don't throw anything at me. And it works, and it works good. And if it didn't, we'd have a problem. So these are the two model access points we use. Uh, the 1020 is a little bit dated at this point. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it's dated, but it's, it's just a, an N access point. Um, these are typically what we put in the classrooms, um, unless it's new construction where the, everybody gets an A32, which is a higher capacity. Obviously, you can see right there. Um, but, and this serves us well. So the A32s, typically, they're obviously in their own virtual cell. So that's in like cafeterias, gyms, libraries, places that high density is absolutely needed, unless it's brand new construction, in which case they're everywhere, and then we turn them down even more. Um, but yes, the 1020 is our typical classroom load type AP. So here's, here's just a little example of how um, our newest elementary school, there's, a, there's an AP in every classroom. That's right, too. They're all on one channel, and there's one in every classroom. We need that. There's no way we could get by without it. So as you can see right here, um, I put my requirements in just like everybody else does, and then I, it helps me do the predictive tuning prior to um, you know, everybody coming on board and, and trying it out. And then here's, here's the capacity, um, or the c coverage and capacity requirements, uh, the network health based on those two things. Uh, and you can see, obviously, this is predictive. However, this is how it works. It's great. The, uh, the cafeteria's got one access point in it. That's why that doesn't look so good. But uh, it's an elementary school, so it's not that big a deal. Those kids typically don't have BYOD devices. The B BYOD, I forgot to mention, so that's everywhere. It doesn't matter what school, elementary school, middle school, high school, anybody. Anybody that comes in can get on the network. They can bring any device they want. I have no control over that. <clears throat> Here I just did an example of how I started out in Echohow. It's nothing really um, fancy. Um, this is uh, an example of an 832 access point. Um, started out with 10 dBm and, uh, on the 2.4 and 16 on the 5. So this is really hard to see, and I apologize again, but virtual cell. So the virtual cell is basically the BSSID, so it looks like one gigantic access point. If you could see on the right-hand side, there is two BSSIDs, one per radio, so, and they're exactly the same. And that's how it does the virtual cell, and that's why you see only one, everything on one channel. So here's how we kind of uh, mix up the virtual cell. So it, this is kind of a bad graphic, but the red part is basically in the areas where we would put the 1020s, where it's a medium duty access point. And then the blue areas are where we would put the high density access points, which basically means there's multiple cells around the school, and those are on different channels. So yes, it is single channel, but the blue areas, they're all on channel one and 149, and the area, like the classrooms that are red, those are all on channels 11 and 44 across the entire county, every single one, except for the ones in my office, because 
we test some stuff there. Um, here's, here's just a, an access point in, a, in, the, in one of the libraries, and I, I know it's kind of hard to see, but I just wanted you guys to see the number of clients that are on that radio. It's 110 right there. Uh, not a whole lot of traffic, but there's minimal loss, all in the same channel. I just wanted you guys to see that with all those clients on there, all on one channel, there's minimal loss, and they're, they're obviously the channel utilization is low just because there's really nothing going on. It's just general web traffic, stuff like that, nothing fancy. So obviously there's many different ways you can do this. I, I could spend like a whole day talking about this. There's many different ways to accomplish the same goal with single channel architecture. We do it on a very large scale obviously, and it works. So all the things that I hear, and I, I, it took me forever to even want to admit that I did single channel architecture. I'm not lying, I'm not lying. I, I've years, years before I actually admitted it on Twitter. And I, it was a rant, but I can't get into that because I'm already over. Um, but there is much, much more to it. Um, just like everything else, proper planning, design, implement, implement, excuse me, implementation, tuning, monitoring, all the same things that you guys do on your multi-channel, I do on the single channel. Um, and you have to apply all those. And if you do all that, it will scale just like it does for us. It works great. We love it. So with that, that's my information. If anybody has any questions, I'll take questions Offline. elsewhere. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.